Yeah, so Franklin Templeton is one of the largest asset managers in the world. Uh, we manage assets across multiple different asset classes globally. Um, you know, I currently work at uh, Franklin Mutual Advisors. I co-lead our efforts around ESG and sustainability. Um, and that is a big focus at many of the asset managers, including Franklin Templeton as well. Yeah, ESG has become very topical over the last, I want to say, two, three years, particularly after the pandemic. I think it's a variety of things. I think there's a lot of pressure on investors, governments, um, people in general to kind of deal with some externalities that are environmental and social in nature. I think the pandemic kind of showed us the need to manage some of these risks much more for business. Um, I think supply chain shocks are showing kind of the need to manage some of our environmental risks a bit more. Um, and I think there's a generational pressure to it as well, where younger folks are very, very interested in kind of societal and environmental outcomes of whatever it is that they do, whether that's their job, whether that's their investments. Um, so I think it's a variety of factors that have come together to, to, to make this uh, pretty important these days. We're getting to the point where people will slowly appreciate it is just business. And, you know, we don't need to separate E, S and G considerations from fundamentals of doing business. But I think it's new, right? And I think it's costly for many people. And I think it's a journey and it takes time for us to really get to where we want to get to, where we're, you know, systematically considering this as we make investment decisions. Um, but I think, you know, we're in the early stages. We're probably in the first inning of what is going to be quite, quite the journey over the next, call it, decade or two. Mm -hmm. um, and I look forward to kind of being a part of that journey and really driving those efforts for uh, the generation coming behind me that are going to really care about these issues and going to be very affected by them. This post-pandemic reality is kind of the early innings of what's going to look very, very different for you and I than the world looked to my parents, right, growing up. And I think we're going to have a more data-driven world. We're going to have things that you can't imagine today because out of necessity, out of the fact that we don't have the same amount of resources that we may have had 10, 15, 20 years ago. So I believe we're already in it. We're already in that change as it's occurring. Um, and I think we're going to look out in five, 10 years and really be shocked by how different things look than they were in 2020, than they were in 2010. Um, and I think that is the constant, is that, is that change that, you know, we all constantly have to grapple with. Um, and, you know, it's not always easy as you get older to kind of, you know, get used to that change, but it's coming regardless. I, I, I like to say a phrase I use is, uh, the enemy is us in the sense of, this is really about a discussion of what type of planet do we want to live in? And that's hard, right? Because they're going to be um, we're going to have to give up certain things that we may not all want. And maybe that would be by force. Maybe that would be, you know, via regulation or government intervention of some sort. Um, but I think uh, it's really a discussion on what kind of planet we want to live on. I think, I think some of the mistakes we make is we make it about saving the planet. It's really about saving ourselves and making sure that it is a comfortable place for us to really live on and enjoy and pass on to our kids. So I think that's a bit of a misnomer. It's less about the planet and more about us.